you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. It turns out that it's going to be easier to solve part B first before solving part A. So our goal will be to find the wavelength of the recoiling photon. And to do that, we're going to use the so-called Compton effect. And so in this equation, we have the initial wavelength of the incident photon. And then here we have the wavelength of the recoiling photon. Here H is Planck's constant. We have the mass of the electron that the photon is colliding with. C is the speed of light. And then theta is the angle between the incident and scattered photons. And we can actually figure out the value of theta next because the question notes that the rebounding photon recoils directly backwards. And so we can imagine the photon initially moving let's say in the rightward direction and then after the collision with the electron it turns around and moves in the opposite direction. And so the angle between the rightward direction and the leftward direction would actually be 180 degrees. So that's what we're going to fill in for theta. The initial wavelength was given to us also as 0.1 nanometers and then these values right here are constants. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know and we'll end up solving for the wavelength of the recoiling photon. So here are the values plugged in. Notice that Planck's constant, the mass of the electron, and the speed of light are all in their standard units. We have omitted those units for clarity. On the left-hand side of the equation, we have to make sure that we change the nanometers into the standard unit of meters. So we've multiplied the 0.1 by 10 to the minus 9. Let's pick up our calculators and simplify the right-hand side. And when you punch that into your calculators, you should get about 4.85 times 10 to the minus 12 and that will come out in meters since everything else was in a standard unit. And then we can go ahead and add the 0.1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters to both sides of the equation. And when you add together you should get about 1.05 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And so this would be the correct answer in meters. You could convert it back to nanometers by noting that one meter is 10 to the power of nine nanometers, and you would get about 0 0.105 nanometers. So that is another correct answer for part B. Now we can move on to part A of the question, and we're going to use the conservation of relativistic energy. And to understand how to do that, we could draw the picture of the photon that is incident on the electron. So this will be our electron and this will be our photon. And we'll notice that initially the only energy that's present is the energy of the photon. And that energy is going to be hc over lambda. And of course lambda is the incident wavelength. In fact there is another form of energy here. The electron, though it's at rest, has what Einstein called the rest energy and that's equal to mc squared. So technically there are two forms of energy present this will serve as the initial energy. And then we move over to the final scenario. There's a collision and the electron is sent moving off in the rightward direction. The photon rebounds in the leftward direction. And at this point the photon has a new energy that we can call hc over lambda prime. This, will, this lambda prime will be the wavelength of the recoiled photon. And then we have the electron. Now the electron is moving, so it now has its mc squared energy, but also its kinetic energy. And we can see that because mc squared appears on both sides of the equation, we could subtract it from both sides and therefore eliminate it. So the energy equation simplifies to the following. Now of course we're trying to solve for the kinetic energy, so we're going to subtract this term over to the left hand side. And so we're left with this result. We could actually factor out in HC for simplicity. So we'll have 1 over the original wavelength of the photon minus 1 over the wavelength of the recoiling photon and that's going to equal the kinetic energy. And so now we're ready to just plug in the known values. We've got Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light 
and we'll keep them in their standard units. And then we're going to multiply that by 1 divided by the original wavelength of 0.10 nanometers. Let's not forget to convert that into the standard unit of meters, multiply by 10 to the minus 9, minus 1 over the wavelength of the recoiling pho photon, which we found earlier to be 1.05 times 10 to the minus 10. And that's going to equal the final kinetic energy of the electron. And when you carefully type that out in your calculator, you should get about 9.2 times 10 to the minus 17, and then the standard unit of kinetic energy will be joules. So this would be the correct answer in joules. And then if you wanted, you can convert that into the common unit of electron volts. And to do that, we can say that one electron volt is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. The joules will cancel. And when you type that into your calculator, you would get roughly 575 electron volts. So that would be an equivalent answer for the kinetic energy of the electron. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that is shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.